Okay, so let's get started here. This is Mr. Adolf, and we're going to pick up right where we left off with cell division. So we are organisms that are made of cells, right? We're made of trillions of cells, and that's a hard number to even say and wrap your head around because trillion, I mean, who's seen a trillion of anything? But we're made of trillions of cells. Now, life started as a single-celled organism, and that is a hard thing to kind of really wrap your head around that at one point on this planet, all we had were single-celled organisms. And then something happened. You know, you go back through evolutionary time and we made the jump. Life made the jump from a single-celled organism to a multiple-celled organism. And here we are today where organisms are made up of trillions of cells and those cells have to function. And one of those things cells have to do is they have to replicate. Cells die. That's the reality of the situation. And this is a, you know, a number that They've come out with a long time ago, but every seven years, your body has replaced itself except for a handful of types of cells. So most of you is new every seven years. And that's wild, but when you think about it, it makes sense, right? Think about how you look every seven years. You look very different. Your body's always changing, and that's because your cells are always replicating. In that process, there's really two ways in which cells replicate. One process is called mitosis. The second one is called meiosis. And we're gonna start with mitosis here. And we're actually going to start with the idea of just cell division in general. So first thing we have to recognize is we have a couple different types of cells. And one type is called a somatic cell, and the other type is called a gamete. And they have very different jobs. Well, somatic cells have many different jobs in general because a somatic cell is a body cell. So think of all the cells that make you up. You know, you have skin cells, muscle cells, fat cells, hair cells, all these different types of cells have jobs, but they're all considered somatic or body cells, and they all have 46 chromosomes. And that's because they have half of the DNA from your mom and half of the DNA from your dad. So if both of your parents donated 23 chromosomes, you have 46. Now gametes or sex cells are very specific. There are two different types. In males, there are sperm. In females, there are eggs. And they have half of the DNA. They have half of the number of chromosomes, 23. And there's a reason for that. If both parents had 46 as their gametes and they donated 46 chromosomes, their new little baby would have 92 chromosomes. And that is not good. That is not a scenario where more is better. You want to have 46. So by having 23 and 23, we solve that problem. So uh, it's just, you know, it makes sense. So just know that gametes are sex cells. They have 23 chromosomes and somatic or body cells and they have 46 chromosomes. Okay, let's keep moving here. Why do cells divide? Now, we talked a little bit about this before we left, and we talked about the fact that bigger is not always better. Sometimes it is, but in this case, it's not. Think about driving around. You got your first car, and you have a giant tractor trailer truck, massive, massive truck, big you know, trailer on the back, but you're just driving around, and you're not carrying anything. You're just driving your car around, your truck around to pick up groceries. And you're using a massive amount of gas. You're towing all this unnecessary weight. And you're wasting a lot of resources. Well, nature doesn't like waste. And nature came up with the solution. So cells grow to a certain size and then they divide instead of getting bigger and bigger. Imagine if you were one giant cell walking around. First of all, you would look disgusting. But secondly, it wouldn't be very effective. And the reason why is because things get in and out of cells through the cell membrane. And the only way to do that is if there's enough membrane. As a cell gets bigger and bigger, what ends up happening is you have this thing called surface area to volume ratio changing. And as that ratio changes and gets smaller and smaller, meaning that there's, you know, the surface area is going to not get bigger as the volume gets bigger, you're going to have a situation where there's too much space inside the cell and not enough ways into the cell. So imagine a gigantic classroom where thousands of people have to get in and out, but there's only one doorway. Or imagine that same classroom and there's hundreds of doorways. You know, that one doorway is not going to work out very well. So it's important as a cell gets bigger, it eventually hits a point where it divides and it just allows the cell to function in a much more effective manner. Why do cells divide? Well, there's several reasons why cells would divide. For one thing, as I mentioned, your cells are always replacing themselves. Every seven years, you know, all of your skin cells are replaced, your bone cells, your muscle cells do not, that your muscle cells don't divide, your neurons, you know, they divide, but they divide very slowly. So it's not every cell in your body, but almost all of the cells in your body have been replaced every seven years. So we got to keep fresh new cells going, right? You got to stay strong. 
Um, also, cells die. Uh, your stomach lining replaces itself every day or two, and those cells have to be replaced. You're, think about if you've ever bitten the inside of your mouth, how quickly it heals. Cells that are on the outside, uh, your skin, the inside of your mouth, those are um, endothelial cells. Those cells are constantly replacing themselves. Growth. You got taller, right? Think back to, you know, when you were 11 or 12 and now think at 15, 16 and, you know, some of you guys are still growing. Um, that is growth spurt that occurred when you hit puberty, that happened at your growth plates. That was this process called mitosis. And then finally, when you make someone new, right? So you all started off as a single cell and you quickly became two, then four, then eight, then 16. Um, the number keeps going up until you get to trillions, right? That's where we are today. So all these are reasons why our cells divide. Now let's talk about how they do it. Uh, there is an ongoing process inside every single one of your cells, which is called the cell cycle. And as you guys know, a cycle is something that continues to go. It doesn't end. Um, it just goes and goes and goes. And this is an example of that. So there's two stages to this cycle, but really um, this cycle is going to continue. And this is occurring in your somatic cells. So these are your body cells. The two phases that we're going to talk about are called interphase and division. So if you take a look here, you can see interphase is this section of this diagram here. You can see the arrow here in this little purple area. That's interphase. And as you can see, interphase actually has three separate subphases called G1, S, and G2, which we're going to talk about. And then here in this little slice here, you can see that is when cell division actually occurs. So this time period here during interphase is when it's not dividing. And then this time period here, which is when it is dividing, is called mitosis and cytokinesis. And we're going to talk more about that in the next video. So at the end of that process, you get one cell becomes two new what we call daughter cells. And we'll use that term further, you know, uh, we'll use that more as we go through. Let's talk more about interphase. I'm going to use an analogy. You can plug in your analogy, you know, come up with your own if you want. I'm going to use football as an analogy just because I think it really translates well to this. But, um, you know, you can relate it to anything really that where there's an event that occurs. So um, interphase is broken into three distinct stages, G1, S, and G2. And just like when you're on a football team, what's the whole point of being on the team to win a game, right? And let's say you have a game every Sunday. Well, what are you doing, you know, from Monday, you know, through Saturday? Are you sitting on your couch doing nothing? No, you're getting ready for the next game. And that's essentially what's happening here with interphase. When a cell is not dividing, it's not just sitting there staring at the wall. It's doing a bunch of stuff, right? And one of the things it's doing is it's getting ready to divide again. So let's talk about what's happening during these phases. The first phase really um, is called G1, and that is the growth phase. We got a new baby cell, right? We have one cell became two new daughter cells. Well, those little daughter cells are going to grow. Now, as I mentioned before, they get to a certain size and then they divide. But until they get to that size, they are going to grow. So one of the things football players need to do is put on muscle, right? So by putting on muscle, you're lifting weights, you're building um, proteins, you're putting muscle on your body by taking in proteins and adding new proteins. Um, that is essentially what's happening inside of your cells. They are growing. And cells need organelles. We talked about that in the cell unit. Ribosomes, um, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus. These all have to get made by the cell. So that's what's happening during G1. So G1 is called the growth phase. And that is when the cell is really just coming into its own. It's growing. It's getting bigger. And it is building organelles that it needs to function. The second phase is probably, if not the most important, you know, it's up there is one of the most important functions of a cell, and that is DNA replication. Now, we just spent a whole unit on DNA, so hopefully you understand the importance of that molecule. It dictates how that cell functions for the rest of its life. So if the DNA is not copied correctly and there's a mutation that occurs, that cell, that is new cell that is made, can be completely useless or even dangerous to the organism in which it's dividing. So that's when we get this process called the S phase. Now, one of the things that's most you know impressive to me about football is the ability to learn all these plays in a short amount of time. So that is something that is going to occur here, essentially. I like to make this analogy of learning plays. So when a football team is getting ready to play on Sunday, they're going to learn the new plays. This is the S phase. The S phase is that DNA gets copied. Every single one of those 46 chromosomes is going to get copied into a new DNA molecule. So at the end of that, 
How many are going to be in this cell? For a short amount of time, there's going to be 92, right? Because 46 gets doubled into 92. Now, eventually, that's going to split, okay? But for right now, our DNA is full of, you know, this cell has got a lot of DNA in there. You know, we have helicase, unzips it, DNA polymerase copies it. And what we end up with is a whole new copy of our DNA for the new cell. One thing I want to point out is this idea of a restriction point. The restriction point is this, um, you know, we want to control our cells. We don't want our cells just divide like crazy. That's what happens when cancer occurs. Cells just divide out of control. So there are some um, stop gaps in place. There are some stages to the cycle where there's chemical signals which tell the cell when it's time to divide and when it's not time to divide. So if we get past that restriction point, that's when this process occurs. And then finally, we have our G2 phase. And G2 phase is the phase right before the cell divides. And just like a football team, right before they go on the field, they're in the locker room. They don't just run out there. They put on their pads, right? Football is dangerous. You get a concussion. You could be out for a long time. So you put on your helmet. You put on your pads. That is essentially what's happening during G2. The cell's making sure it knows it's, you know, the DNA is copied. It edits that so the players know their plays. And then the cell gets ready to divide by making the um, organelles it needs to divide, specifically the centrioles and the spindle fibers. Those are structures that are used during the process of mitosis in order to make that cell split. So um, just as quick review, G1, the cell is going to get bigger and organelles are going to form. Then we're going to have our S phase, which is going to be the DNA replicates, just like learning the plays for a football, you know, football game. And then finally, we have our G2, which is like the getting ready to divide phase. This is the organelles get made for division, and the DNA is just double-checked to make sure it gets copied correctly with some proteins, which work as editors. And finally, uh, the last thing I want to talk about here is this idea of DNA. And remember, um, DNA, when it's not dividing, it's called chromatin with an N, C, you know, C-H-R-O-M-A-T-I-N. But when it divides, it becomes something called a chromatid, and that is one copy of a chromosome. So a single copy of a chromosome is chromatid, and then when it divides, you know, when we get, you know, that idea of that S phase, we get something called sister chromatids. When you have two identical chromatids held together, and they form that X shape. So this image here just shows you a sister chromatid, and you can see that they form together at this point called the kinetochore, and that is just... It's called the centromere, and it's in the middle of the chromosome, and that is where these two sister chromatids attach. And we're going to talk more about them in the next section. So just as a quick review, we talked about the fact that DNA is going to uh, be a big part of this process and replication. This is the nucleus replicating, this first part here. Um, and we talked about the fact that the cell cycle has multiple stages. Thank you very much.